do calories matter? Can you eat a meal this big for a year and lose weight? You already know the answer. If you follow me at all, I am down 140 pounds from eating the ridiculously big salad. And today I'm going to talk about the calories in this giant salad, whether we should be counting them, what we can say about the model of calories in, calories out, a model that many of us love to hate, what we should maybe love about it, what we should hate about it. Let's examine it in detail. There seems to be a lot of confusion out there these days. The confusion that I see in the Eat Like a Bear community about calories stems from the popularity of hating on the calories in, calories out model, which I get. I get it, and I'm going to talk about that. But first, let me frame this whole discussion. I am going to give you two sentences. These sentences are not equivalents, but many people see them as equivalents, and that is where the confusion lies. So here are the two sentences. Number one, the calories in, calories out model is wrong. Number two, calories don't matter. First of all, the calories in, calories out model is in fact completely incomplete. Number two, calories do matter. And so many people hear the increasingly popular claim that the calories in, calories out model does not work, and then they consider that to be the equivalent of calories do not matter. And I'll tell you what, for those of us who want to eat everything, absolutely everything, and to just stuff ourselves until we're completely full, I am one of those people. You know that if you follow me. The idea that calories don't matter is a real disaster for us because they do matter. But I want to give you the framework, the way of thinking to help you see the way in which they do matter, why we can have comments like the calories in, calories out model is wrong, and why it is also the case that calories still matter. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that. Now, I think many of us deep in our hearts know that the calories in, calories out model is incomplete because we're all kind of victims of it. I mean, <laughs> you don't get to be 50 years old in America without not having tried the calories in, calories out model, maybe quite a number of times, <laughs> all right? And so, and you know, the problem is, so you can lose on it and then maintenance is kind of a disaster. And we see that very clearly from the um, maintenance problems among the people who have been on the, the television show, The Biggest loser because that is just a classic example of really restricting calories to bring on the weight loss and we see massive weight loss in that show but we also see their maintenance rate success rate is something like zero percent I mean it is approaching zero percent and those people end up struggling with weight maintenance even more because they've effectively lowered the level of caloric intake that they can have because their body gets adapted to lower calories and so then in maintenance they have to restrict themselves even more making maintenance that much more difficult and as a result they start packing on the pounds again and in many cases pack on even more now how many of us know that have lived through that we get it okay we completely get it and so then hearing that well maybe the problem is in the model of calories in calories out I mean hallelujah maybe that model was actually not completely correct all of those years and that is one of the reasons we've all been so fat all right okay so you know I'm the president of the club right y'all know I was 280 pounds okay so let's just get that out of the way the model is incomplete it's incomplete, and The Biggest Loser Show has shown us that it's maybe not the successful long game strategy, okay, because it lowers your metabolism, essentially. And because of the clear point that many people are making, you'll see them all over the place, these claims on the, the YouTube channels, you know, by the doctors here, that not all calories are equal. And I think deep in our hearts, we all know that to be true too. Because, you know, this salad has, uh, this is a lower calorie salad in my world, so it's maybe 800 calories. So I could eat this or I could eat, I don't know how many Twinkies could you eat for 800 calories, three or four or whatever. I mean, I don't even know. I haven't even looked up Twinkies. But the point is, let's say we had the Twinkie equivalent of 800 calories and we ate that okay and so we could eat this like as our meal for the whole day we get all this nutrition like the long game of this with the nutrients in it compared to the nutrients in something like a Twinkie okay you know this is going to be a better long game nutritional approach okay so that's just the nutrients but also in terms of the weight loss so like 800 calories is a very low calorie diet. My salads typically have more calories than that, but say you just lived on that, you'd lose weight, 
I don't, you know, you wouldn't lose as much weight on the 800 Twinkie diet because in fact, the Twinkies are going to actually affect your insulin differently than this salad will. And so insulin is, as we produce more insulin over our life cycle because we eat too many Twinkies or whatever, okay? Maybe I hope the you know Twinkie people don't sue me for like slander or something like that. But you know anyway over the many years of eating all the stuff cause us to produce more insulin every day and then more the next day and more the following day and over the years more and more and more insulin and that insulin then makes us fat guys okay the twinkie the cake the chips whatever it is that's spiking your blood sugar more than this 800 calorie salad would is getting you fatter than this salad would, okay? And so that is how, like, the calories are not equal. I mean, the calorie number is equal, 800, 800, okay? The effect on whether you are fat is not equal. Now, at the end of the day, I care if I'm fat, right? Because if I'm not fat and I can get out in the world better, run around, hike, all that, that's what I care about. So ultimately that's what I care about. The other thing I care about is the key point that this has just a lot more nutrients in it. And so as the years go on and every day I'm eating something more like this to fuel me instead of the packaged like frosting junk, then this is the long game strategy. It's the long game strategy in terms of whether I'm actually gonna end up trim and able to live my life, but it's also the long game strategy in terms of am I actually getting like some potassium in my lunch, okay? That is the thing, but there's more than this. And this is where I want you to think a little bit about your implementation of the Ridiculously Big Salad if you're following this meal approach, because people do miss this. Now, the part two of the book called The RBS Maker's Toolkit goes through the framework, goes through the different layers of the salad, the greens, the dressing, the protein on top, and then the other stuff, the fourth layer of the salad, discusses it as a whole, how it's going to fit in your goals, how you can adapt it and make it your own. But a key point, a very key point is actually in the end, the whole thing, the whole package of the salad needs to be calorie minded enough to help you meet your goals. And, and so while we can say calories in, calories out, that whole model, you know, that wasn't really right. We also should not say calories don't matter because I could take this 800 calorie salad which again is a little bit on the low side for me. I'd like to have more like 1,000 to 1,200 in my rapid weight loss space. But let's say we're eating a 1,000 calorie salad versus we're just loading it up with all kinds of stuff because you, I mean, you could put Twinkies on the salad, right? You can put anything you want, call it a salad. And that thing, I mean, I could eat easily a 3,000 calorie salad. Well, my maintenance calories are only about 1,800. And so in that case, a 3,000 calorie salad, I'm sorry, but uh, that's over- you know, that's way over. I'm not going to lose weight on that. Probably going to gain. All right. And so in this case, I'm a one meal a day eater. I eat something that looks a lot like this every single day. So for me, the point of comparison is not this versus whatever the people on The Biggest Loser are eating. The question is me eating this versus me packing it full of, I don't know, a bunch of cheese and pistachios, which I'd love to do every single day and get it up to 3,000 calories, but then I wouldn't make the progress that I want to make because I really need to keep those calories sort of in a certain limit. And for me, I'm a pretty small person. Small now was a lot less small, you know, four years ago at 280 pounds, but the point is my maintenance calories are pretty low. And so I do have to be mindful, even in maintenance, that I don't go over. And so this is where the calories do matter. And this is where the RBS framework is calorie minded. And I know people, you know, kind of want to get real disappointed about that. And I know, I get it. I so get it because I want to eat all the calories too. I really do, which is why the framework itself is highly strategic in helping us get to fullness on a more limited number of calories, okay? That's the secret. You know, I talk about all the time, like the secrets that lettuce. 
dig into the framework, learn it, and craft it around your calorie needs. But, you know, don't fool yourself that you can just eat all the calories that you want. I see people posting about that all the time, and people come up and, I mean, almost want to fight with me about it. Guess what, guys? We really can't eat everything we want. I mean, that's how we got where we are, and I'm sorry to be a messenger. What I do show you is all of the great success we have, and really what you can do once you get to your goal weight. I mean, the life you can live is worth far more than those extra calories. I guarantee you that. So that's what you need to focus on. And, and I'd encourage you to not spend too much time in that mindset of, no, I really can eat absolutely as much as I want because, you know, gosh, um, no, you need to be a strategic eater. And that's what the RBS framework will teach you how to be. Because I guarantee you, I would like to eat absolutely everything too.